three obstacles and four devils uh, definitions so that everybody's aware mm -hmm. of them. We left off, are we rolling? Mm -hmm. Okay, we left off last week, if I'm not mistaken, on page 31, right? The top of page 31, mm -hmm. we're going to start right now. Mm -hmm. Fulfilling the mission to realize the Buddha's de intent and decree. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Page 31. Mm -hmm. Top of the set, first column. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. The first four peaceful practices in the peaceful practices chapter, that the practices themselves, correspond to shoju. To carry them out in this age would be as foolish as sowing seeds in winter and expecting to reap the harvest in spring. It is natural for a rooster to crow at dawn, but strange for him to crow at dusk. And now, when the true and the provisional teachings are utterly confused, it would be equally unnatural for one to seclude oneself in the mountains, forests, and carry out the peaceful practices of shoju without refuting the enemies of the Lotus Sutra. One would lose the chance to practice the Lotus Sutra. Everybody understands? Mm -hmm. Because the Lotus Sutra is the teaching of Shakabuku. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So even though the peaceful practices is the 13th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, if you didn't do Shakabuku, you wouldn't be able to practice the Lotus Sutra. Mm -hmm. Because that part of the Lotus Sutra becomes clear in the latter half. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. it says here. Here Nichiren issues a scathing refutation of the priests of the established Buddhist schools who adhere to the practice of shoju, peaceful practices. At that time when the provisional teachings and true teachings are in dire, are in dire confusion, these priests seclude themselves in mountain forests, gaining prestige and authority by standing aloof from the world, separating themselves from society and its and its conflicts. He declares that their behavior is as strange and unnatural as a rooster crowing at dusk instead of at dawn. So we don't go, re, you know, retire to ashrams or to mountaintops or to places of separation and seclusion and have people come visit us. That's not what the Daishonin was doing at Minobu. Do understand that. All right. He had already done shakabuku to the point that he had been banished and exiled. And it was like the third time he came back, they said, you know, we'll give you your own temple, we'll give you cash, everything else. Just stop talking about everybody else has to practice all the other provisional teachings. He said, I, no, I, can't absolutely, I absolutely cannot go along with that. That's when he retired to Mount Minobu. So he didn't go to Minobu to be chilled, okay? He went to Minobu to secure the teaching that would last the 10,000 years of Mapo and beyond in the form of his writings. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, here the Daishonin issues a scathing refutation of the priests of the established Buddhist schools who adhere to the practice of shoju. At a time when the provisional teachings and true teaching are in dire confusion, these priests seclude themselves in mountain forests, gaining prestige and authority by standing aloof from the world. He declares that their behavior is as strange and unnatural as a rooster crowing at dusk instead of dawn. As I mentioned earlier, the latter day of the law is a time when the provisional teachings and true teachings become hopelessly confused as a result of the workings of devilish functions. To make matters even worse, priests of the Tendai school, a school that had originally espoused the, the, the supremacy of the Lotus Sutra, why? Because it was based on the teachings of Tendai and, 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 and Dingyo had inherited that failed to challenge or refute error in the realm of Buddhism at Mount Hei, when Jikaku and Shisho took over and, and twisted everything into true word, right? Mm -hmm. Failed to challenge or refute the error in the realm of Buddhism and instead devoted themselves to carrying out shoju and mountain forests far removed from society. Because what's true word all about? Yeah. And contemplative meditation, all right? Failing to fight for truth when the time demands, standing by idly when grave error is committed in the realm of Buddhism, such conduct, such conduct is tantamount to abetting evil. Mm. This is because ultimately it contributes to the very destruction of Buddhism itself. Okay, what is our example of that truth executed in daily life by lay people that changed the course of history. 
that changed the course of the Buddhism of the sowing as it relates to its fulfillment as actualized, being actualized in the latter day of the law. What example have we got of that? What he just said here, I'm going to say this again. This is really goddamn important, so listen to this. Mm -hmm. Failing to fight for truth when the time demands, standing by idly when grave error is committed in the realm of Buddhism, such conduct is tantamount to abetting, helping evil, you know, uh, uh, doing it favor, f facilitating evil. This is because ultimately it contributes to the very destruction of Buddhism itself because it dilutes and obscures the correct teaching. The correct teaching is not always just visible in a book. It's, as, I've been teach, as I've been showing, it's growing all the time, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually expressed by the lives of the Buddhas that mm -hmm. express it, okay? Mm -hmm. So what, did he, what, what <clears throat> actual experience, historically, can you think of any? <coughs> there are at least two that I can think of, both very similar. One would have been after the war, when President, when they, when, when, when President Toda, went, actually three, one when President Makaguchi went and men, uh, remonstrated before they threw him in prison, mm -hmm. went and, pr and remonstrated with the high priest. Secondly, when President Toda came back with a bunch of youth division and said, if you ever do that again, not nice things will happen. And what would be the third one? Separation. Separation. Nikin Shonin trying to say that the high priest is supreme. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, in reality, we already have experiential history that doesn't go back to the days of Nitrin to see this truth being uh, not only held up, upheld and, and exemplified through fact, but we also know that none of what I'm talking to you about or have been talking to you about for all these years could have occurred without those three things happening. Do understand that. My own actual each and sons and could never been achieved without the Buddhism of the, of, 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 of the Soka philosophy being actualized through the faith and practice of those that have preceded me and been my teachers. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. In other words, if President Makaguchi wouldn't have stood up to set the example for President Toda, and this is the line, no, we don't do Shinto talisman. No, we don't, do, we Fujifuse on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is the object of devotion. This is the true teaching. We have to save, we have to protect the law. Mm -hmm. This is what protecting the law is. Mm -hmm. Protecting the law is standing up rather than standing idly by. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's what separates the true Buddhas from the wannabes, the thought they were. Understand that? Okay. Same thing for President uh, Toda. Same thing for President uh, Ikeda. You know, the things that they've done. Are, none of this that we could be understanding and reading right now. We have actual historical examples not 5,000 years from ago. Just, you know, within the last generation or so. Okay? So we don't have to reach back that far to know this is the truth. In the Daishonin's day, because the rigor and intent of the Buddha's teaching were lost or confused, many priests grew corrupt and degenerate. Becoming lazy and remiss in their Buddhist practice, they grew spiritually weak and were co concerned only with protecting their own interests. And yet, they were the ones that the lay people were putting all their faith and trust in to deliver them through their prayers. Yet, they're not even doing adequate, correct practice for prayers to be answered. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. This is obviously going in a hole here. This caused them to align with the ruling authorities and mark the start of growing authoritarianism among the established Buddhist schools. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All they care is about keeping the sovereign happy and keeping the tilt full from the royalty that are not faced with the difficulties of the common people. At the root of this development was the exclusive reliance on the practice of shoju. Buddhism is a peaceful kind of a thing and we don't do anything to upset anybody and everybody's path is their own and it all leads to the same Buddhahood. 
That was the basis of the provisional teachings. That is an incorrect teaching in the latter day of the law. Because the Buddhist teachings that sustained the beliefs and values forming the bedrock of society were confused and misguided, practicing shakabuku to refute error and transform the spiritual climate of society accorded with the Buddha's true intent. The Buddha's true intent is Kosa Rufu. You can't have Kosa Rufu without the correct teaching. You can't have the correct teaching without refuting the incorrect teaching. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so Nietzsche and Shoshu, the, oh, he's gonna talk about it here a little bit. The Nietzsche and Shoshu priesthood today is every bit as misguided as the various schools that persecuted Nietzsche in his time. And that is a fact. Because I shouldn't be getting what I'm getting if they're right. Okay, sorry. During World War II, Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Tota of the Soka Gakkai opposed the demands of the Japanese militarist authorities and stood up for the peace and happiness of the people, undaunted by persecutions, undaunted by the threat of going to prison, okay? Undaunted by the threat of, I'm going to tear your 15 million organiza person organization apart. Do you understand? That was hell. That was a big deal. Okay? The priesthood, fearful of the authority, suspended uh, publication of Nietzsche's collected writings and, and excised lines from certain passages, committing an unpardonable offense as Nietzsche's disciples. Are you, all familiar, are you all aware of that? I'll say that again. This happened. This is a fact. The priesthood, Fearful of the authorities because of the proclamations of the Buddhism of the sowing saying everything else is wrong and you better not do it. So in order to not put themselves sideways, to not have to stand up, they changed the goddamn teaching. Their own decision. They, uh, their own decision in order to avoid the heat that Nietzsche is saying you must face. To avoid the heat that Makaguchi said, then, put me in prison. You know, the Toda said, if I don't get to 750,000 households, don't even have a funeral for me, throw my ashes in Tokyo, river, you know, or what, and we all know, I know personally what President Kato has gone through. Day after day after day, the hatred toward him, the second guessing, the made up crap, you know, all he's trying to do is help, and unless he lives like a monk, that's not okay. That's ridiculous. The priesthood, fear, on the top of 32, the priesthood fearful of the authority suspended publications of Nietzsche's collected writings, suspended publication of the Gosho. Lay people couldn't read the Gosho. Mm -hmm. They had to rely on the priest to read them the Gosho at Oko on Sunday at the temple. You didn't know that? The only reason the Gosho exists is because of... Uh, Jose Toda and a retired high priest. It's the only reason the Gensh, uh, 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 Gosho Zinshu was compiled. And that high priest was the Buddhist scholar of high priests that had the capacity to get, by the way, they changed this. He had all the shit underlined in his personal copies to know what was correct and what wasn't. So that when we published the Gosho Zinshu, when I say we, Nietzsche and Shoshu, I'm pardon me, uh, Soka Gakkai, published the, the Gosho Zenshu. We were able to utilize that as a basis of refutation so that they already kicked all these sex ass. They already, they already took on Nietzsche and Shu in debate. Back in the 50s, this is what President Tota did for not sport, but to keep everything going. Okay? They were not bashful about debate. They were not bashful about study, and they were not bashful about declaring direct, correct teachings, because what they would do is they would show where the other schools had changed their original doctrine, okay, to conform to all this kind of stuff. Okay, so, so understand, this has been the problem with the priesthood. They have been in a position to, and it's not like they're bad people because they're priests, but it's bad if they take that position of authority and exercise their own values into it because they are automatically not qualified to do that. That's part of the teaching. Mm -hmm. Follow the law, not the person, right? That's from Shakyamuni's times. So he says, 
for certain committing an unpardonable offense as Nitrin's disciples. Yeah, that's unpardonable. Not only that, but as soon as Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Toto were arrested, the priesthood had them banned from visiting the head temple, even though these two leaders were practicing exactly as the Daishonin had taught. Okay? So we were never loved and embraced by the priesthood ever from the very beginning, in truth, because we weren't really ready to just conform to whatever they said. We were following lay leaders that were blazing the trail of living the life of the living Buddha as a common mortal, which the priesthood doesn't even believe in. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, after the war, too, it was the Soka Gakkai and not the priesthood that practiced shakabuku, actively propagating the mystic law, just as Nichiren instructed. In more recent times, the priesthood plotted to destroy the Soka Gakkai, the organization dedicated to re uh, realizing the Buddha's noble decree of Kosen Rufu. Who is practicing in accord with the Buddha's teaching, keeping the Daishonin shakabuku spirit alive and walking the correct path of faith? The answer is perfectly clear. Trust me, I don't say this because... I'm a Soka Gakkai guy. I say this because this is the undisputable truth. Mm -hmm. To fight for truth when the time demands, both Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Toda walk this path of true champions. The SGI is a harmonious community of practitioners, should be, striving to actualize Kosen Rufu in accord with the Buddhist teachings, should be making nature and spirit your own, as we all should be. We are committed to realizing happiness for ourselves and others and spreading the humanistic ideals and principles of Nietzsche and Buddhism for the peace and prosperity of our countries. The Soka Gakkai organization has appeared in accord for Kosen Rufu, endowed with the mission to realize the Buddha's intent and decree. That's why we study this Soka Gakkai teaching together, because that is the case. Okay, but it's not up to the Soka Gakkai. The Soka Gakkai is a mechanism. Who is it up to? The Bodhisattvas of the earth living up to the vow they made in the infinite past as the original disciples of the original teacher. All right? This is the true significance of the Soka Gakkai's appearance in the world. The Bodhisattvas of the earth have arisen. Okay? To, do the, to carry on the Buddha's will. There is something truly wondrous and unfathomable in the fact that Mr. Makaguchi and Mr. Toda, Buddhist leaders of extraordinary cal caliber, appeared in Japan at a time of war when the correct teaching of Buddhism was on the brink of being obliterated. Mr. Makaguchi, speaking out against the mistaken ideology that had plunged the country into war, articulated <coughs> the concept of punishment based on the Gohanza, on the law of cause and effect, nam myoho kyo Mr. Toda stood up alone in the wasteland of post-war Japan and embarked on propagating Nichiren Buddhism to free people from misery, emphasizing benefit based on devoting one's life to the mystic law. Do you understand that? Mm. Makaguchi taught on the basis of don't let that karma bite you in the ass, how to stop from creating the kind of karma that bites you in the ass. Mr. Toda taught from the encouragement, your ass has been bitten, it doesn't matter, you're the Buddha, keep going, you can change anything. Yeah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. their, thought, their, their parent and mother, I launched a global Kosen Rufu movement amid the turmoil of the post-war uh, post world, of the post -war world mm -hmm. emphasizing the importance, as taught in Nietzsche and <coughs> Buddhism, of showing actual proof based on one's behavior as a human being. This is also the wisdom of value creation, born of a readiness to rise up to defend the correct Buddhist teaching and the people's happiness in accord with the principles found in on practicing the Buddhist teachings. I will always remember these words that Mr. Toda addressed to Soka Gakkai leaders. As leaders, you must have the courage to fight against injustice. When the time comes to do so, it would be irresponsible otherwise. You can't protect... You can't protect our precious members unless you do. Once you embark on a struggle of Kosen Rufu, it's, not, it's vital to win. To initiate a struggle and not see it through is a disgrace. Now notice though, he's saying there's going to be a struggle. 
If you're going to go there, you have to finish it to the end, or you will be disgracing yourself. Do understand that when you decide to go forward, it's going to be difficult. Because I have faithfully followed my mentor's guidance, I have won in every struggle. I hope the youth division members in particular will bravely carry on this spirit, which is the cause for certain victory, for absolute victory, for guaranteed victory. Okay? okay. All right, on to page 35 in chapter 3. Is everybody with me? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody cool? Mm -hmm. All right. On practicing the Buddhist teachings, part 3 of 3, encountering great obstacles is proof of propagating the correct teaching for attaining Buddhahood in the latter day of the law. Yay! <laughs> we have so much proof! It's coming out our ass! Okay. That's the way it is. That's the way it's been for 750 years. <clears throat> it's nothing new. This Gosha was written a long time before we were born. We yes. started practicing. The passage for study in this lecture, and just think of the person that when he wrote this gosha, what is he going through personally? You know, here, yeah. Yes. And yet he's having to not only deal with his own, but take it on in a way that he's able to not let anybody feel it. Okay? To, through absolute faith, not lament it. And to carry on in the encouragement of faith based on the teaching. His absolute faith in the teaching is what allows him to make that, those encouraging letters while he's in the middle of shit. Okay? Understand that it's his faith in where he's headed, not where he's at at this moment, that drives what he says in this moment. Okay? That's the same way we're supposed to live. Because we're guaranteed to meet these obstacles, and it's not always pleasant. Mm. Mm -hmm. But it's always something that we will win from, we will gain from, we will learn from, we learn to be able to teach from. In the absence of those difficulties, we will never attain Buddhahood in our present form. And if you're not going to do that, why go through this thing that requires a daily practice and all of this human revolution? Okay, so the passage for study in this lecture Page 35. Now in the latter day of the law, who is carrying out the practice of Shakabuku in strict accordance with the Lotus Sutra? Suppose someone, no matter who, should relentlessly proclaim that the Lotus Sutra alone can lead people to Buddhahood and that all other sutras, far from enabling them to attain the way, only drive them into hell. Observe what happens should that person thus try to refute the teachers and the doctrines of all the other schools that base themselves on these provisional teachings. The three powerful enemies will arise without fail. Our teacher, the thus come one Shakyamuni, practiced Shakabuku during the last eight years of his lifetime. The te great teacher Tentai for more than 30 years and the great teacher Dingya more than 20. I have been refuting... Pardon? I have been refuting the provisional doctrines for more than 20 years, and the great persecutions I have suffered during this period are beyond number. I do not know whether they are equal to the nine great persecutions suffered by the Buddha, but surely neither Tantai nor Dingyo ever faced persecutions as great as mine for the sake of the Lotus Sutra. They encountered only hatred, envy, and slander, whereas I twice incurred the wrath of the rulers and was exiled to remote provinces. Furthermore, I was nearly beheaded at Tatsunokuchi, wounded on the forehead at, at Komatsubara, and slandered time and again. My disciples have also been exiled and thrown into prison, and my lay supporters have been evicted and had their feasts confiscated. How can the persecutions faced by Negarjun, Tiantai, or Dingyo possibly compare with these? Understand then that the votary who practices the Lotus Sutra exactly as the Buddha teaches, as Nichiren practices it, will without fail be attacked by the three powerful enemies. In the more than 2,000 years that have passed since the Buddha's advent, Shakyamuni himself 
Tentai, and Dingyo were the only three who perfectly carried out the Buddhist teachings. Now in the latter day of the law, Nichiren and his disciples and lay believers are just such practitioners as Shakyamuni, Tentai, and Dingyo. Okay, so he's comparing us to them, right? If we cannot be called votaries faithful to the Buddhist teachings, then neither can Shakyamuni, Tentai, or Dengyo. Life flashes by in, a, in but a moment. No matter how many terrible enemies you may encounter, banish all fears and never think of backsliding. Even if someone were to cut off our heads with a saw. That's pretty gruesome. Impale our bodies with lances. Doesn't sound pleasant either. Or shackle our feet and bore them through with gimlets. Can we get a little graphic here? Okay. As long as we are alive, we must keep chanting Nam Yo Ho Ren Gekyo, Nam Yo Ho Ren Gekyo. Then, if we chant until the very moment of death, Shakyamuni, many treasures in the Buddhas of the Ten Directions will come to us instantly exactly as they promised during the ceremony at Eagle Peak. Taking our hands and bearing us on their shoulders, they will carry us to Eagle Peak. The two sages, the two heavenly kings, and the ten demon daughters will guard us while all the heavenly gods and benevolent deities will raise a canopy over our heads and unfurl banners on high. They will escort us under their protection to the land, of, uh, to the treasure land of tranquil light. How can such joy possibly be described? Okay? The lecture, starting on page 37. The Sokagakai is the king of the religious world, declared second president, uh, pardon me. The Sokagakai is the king of the religious world, declared second Sokagakai president, Jose Toda, addressing the 6,000 high-spirited youth who had assembled for a historic gathering on March 16th, 1958. He'd already been out of prison for a while. 1958. Wow, 6,000 youth division. Big deal. They can do that here locally, right? Yeah. Now, right? Yeah. So this isn't so long ago, 58, is that? Yeah. That's not like 100 years ago. 60. His powerful cry still resonates in my <coughs> heart to this day. Hearing President Toda scream that to all these young people that were willing to embark on the life of being bodhisattvas of the earth. It was an expression of the towering conviction of our mentor who had undergone a profound spiritual waking to the essence of the mystic law while in prison and struggled selflessly to realize Kosen Rufu in accord with the Daishonin's decree. What was it that he realized? What spiritual awakening, awakening did he have in prison? Toda. Mm. He's a Buddha. He's a Buddha. He awakened to the fact that he's the Bodhisattva of the earth with the mission to propagate the mystic law in the latter day. Okay, regardless of what consequences or obstacles were involved. Okay, to be right there with his mentor, Mr. Makaguchi, when they finally got out of jail and to do this. Of course, Mr. Makaguchi had already passed away. He did not know that until he left. It was a proclamation of victory by a champion of faith who gave his life to practicing as the Buddha teaches. A great leader who had launched a solitary struggle for Kosen Rufu amid post-war Japan's devastation and who surmounted countless obstacles. Above all, it was a lion's roar infused with the invincible Soka Gakkai spirit, an impassioned cry that would endure for all time. We, the youth gathered at, those, at that occasion, were deeply inspired by this triumphant declaration. I want your minds to try and think about this. Think about like, like how, what this would have been like being there. His words, listening to President Toda, his words drove home to each of us anew. Our lofty missions, our personal responsibility to Kosen Rufu. And we trembled with emotion at, to be practicing Nichiren Buddhism. Because when you get it, you tremble. Mm -hmm. You do. Mm -hmm. You have tears come down your eyes, mm -hmm. down your face. It was a ceremony in which the baton of Kosen Rufu was passed on from the mentor to the disciples. 
with each of us inheriting Mr. Toda's great confidence in the correct teaching and the nobility of our cause. That was more than 50 years ago. Repeating my mentor's declaration at the top of page 38, throughout these many decades, in the spirit of the disciples' voice, joining the teachers in unison to create a powerful lion's roar, exactly as is described in the early transmitted teachings. I have proclaimed Mr. Toda's greatness far and wide and have spread the mystic law throughout Japan and the entire world. I have done so with the unshakable conviction that we are champions of thought and philosophy, champions of peace, culture, and education, and champions of a new humanism. The time has come now for the present generation of youth to inherit the <coughs> spiritual baton of the Soka Gakkai. It is time for you, my young friends, to take on full responsibility for Kosen Rufu and its ongoing development into the eternal future of the latter day of the law. It is your mission to forge a, solitar a solidarity of peace and humanism throughout the world. People everywhere await your endeavors. It is now time to take your place on the main stage of our movement with the wonderful victories you have already achieved so far. Okay, so he's saying there's nothing else you got to do. All you got to do is pick it up with the reflective understanding that what you're doing is very serious. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very arduous. You cannot be defeated and live valiantly, courageously, and fearlessly as the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, and he's also basically saying this not to me, who's in his mid-60s, frankly. He's saying it to you guys that are a little bit younger than me, but it's very important for you to be able to teach this to true youth. To true youth. I will teach this to my children through them watching these videos, if nothing else. That dad's talk, and they'll listen to what I have to say. I'm convinced of that. But this is very important. You can't teach this unless you know it. Yes. Okay? <clears throat> That's why President Cade has written it. And so the only thing you really have to do is get people to read President Decatur's writings. It's not that. It's not rocket science. That's all I'm doing, is reading President Decatur's writings. You can do the same thing. And you can read them in a translated form that allows you to do it in your first time. Okay? But you have to understand what they mean when you read what they say. Okay? That comes from the growth of you as individuals. And it doesn't happen quickly. Indeed, one reason I chose to discuss on, te on practicing the Buddhist teachings at this time is because I wish to entrust the future of our movement to the youth. Because we're getting old and we're going to die. In this chapter, we will look at the concluding section of this writing, which is infused with Nichiren Daishonin's solemn hopes for the appearance of disciples who will practice the Buddhist teachings with his same spirit. I've tried to do that as best I can. Propagating the correct teaching rouses opposition from the three powerful enemies. And this is the hard part. Because when you try and do the right thing, you will be opposed. And you will have to overcome that opposition. Each of you as individuals, there's no pill you can take. There's no wisdom I can give you. I can't pre-tune your life condition to be prepared for that. I can only say the same thing over and over and over so that when the crucial moment comes, you don't forget your vow. That's what the Daishonin says don't do. Right? Now in the latter day of the law, from the Go Show, now in the latter day of the law, who is carrying out the practice of Shakabuku in strict accordance with the Lotus Sutra? So suppose someone, no matter who, should unerringly, unrelentlessly, Proclaim that the Lotus Sutra can alone lead people to Buddhahood and that all of the sutras, far from enabling them to attain the way, only drive them into hell. Observe what happens should that person thus try to refute the leaders and doctrines of all the other schools that base themselves on the provisional teachings. The three powerful enemies will arise without fail. Prior to this section, Nichiren Daishonin explained the way of faith and practice 
for those who wish to correctly carry out the Buddhist teachings in the latter day of the law. He clarified that the way of faith, true to the Buddha's intent, is to believe only in the Lotus Sutra, the one Buddha vehicle that enables all people to attain enlightenment. Now, what did he just say? Though. No. Prior to this section, Nichiren Daishonin explained the way of faith and practice for those who wish to correctly act, to, to, who wish to correctly carry out the Buddha's teachings in the latter day of the law. He clarified the way of faith and true to the Buddha's intent. Pardon me. He clarified that the way of faith true to the Buddha's intent is to believe only in the Lotus Sutra, the one Buddha vehicle that enables all people to attain enlightenment. But what is he really saying? Is he saying to go read the six, uh, to read uh, this? No. No, no. Is he saying to go read it's over there, the Lotus Sutra? No. No. What's he saying? He said the Lotus Sutra, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. In the same was... breath, he said latter day of the law, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. What's the Lotus Sutra in the latter day of the law? Namiyo. And the go show of the Buddhism of the soul. Okay, that's what I want to make sure you understand. Mm -hmm. President Kate is quoting Nichiren, who's quoting the sutras, okay? But our given understanding, okay, mm -hmm. is that's what separates the Soka philosophy from other perceptions of this mm -hmm. teaching. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Mm -hmm. So he's saying, he clarified that the way of faith true to the Buddha's intent is to believe only in Namyo Ho Rengekyo, mm -hmm. the one Buddha vehicle that enables all people to attain enlightenment. Okay, yes, it's divine from the 16th chapter. In the absence of the 16th chapter, it couldn't have been divine. But again, Myoho Rengekyo is Nichiren's teaching. All right? Yeah. He also explained that the practice appropriate for the latter day of the law is the practice of Shakabuku as taught in the Lotus Sutra, which says, I have not yet revealed the truth. All the provisional teachings were expedients. That's the whole point, right? Mm -hmm. That's what the Lotus Sutra is good for. Those declarations. Those kinds of declarations that say leave everything behind, and at the fifth of that, at the end of the fifth, within the fifth half millennium, the pure law will become obscured and lost. Those are the things that the Lotus Sutra is good for, mm. not not practicing according to the Buddha's teachings, reading Nichiren's interpretation and understanding, reading President Akita's. This is the latter day of the law. Okay, Shakyamuni expressed all of this orally. Do understand that, right? Mm -hmm. You can't go to the, the book that Shakyamuni wrote, right? Mm -hmm. you, you can't go to the book that any of Shakyamuni's direct disciples wrote. You can't go back to the book that's even the original language that was being used when Shak Shakyamuni spoke. Mm -hmm. So that's why faith, 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 because it's real easy to look at stuff and say, well, that's the Buddhist. That's what the Buddha said. Yeah? Based on what? Only on faith, ultimately, right? right? Truly and really, realistically. There's no, there's no, you know, uh, carbon dating to something here. You know, the three great councils know the history of Buddhism. This is why faith is the only way to enter to the, the path. He says the one Buddha vehicle that enables all people to attain enlightenment. He also explained the practice. Appropriate for the latter day of the law is the practice of Shakabuku as taught in the Lotus Sutra, the staunch refuting of those forces that slander the Lotus Sutra and seek to obstruct people's happiness. Again, being lost in the Buddhism of the harvest and not knowing the Namyoho Rengekyo of the Buddhism of the sowing. Having affirmed these essential points, top of page 39, Nichiren identifies the votaries who practice the Buddhist, practice the Buddhist teachings with correct faith and in a manner appropriate to this evil latter age. Having affirmed these essential points, Nichiren identifies the votaries who practice the Buddhist teachings with correct faith and in a manner appropriate uh, in the, uh, to this evil age. Who does he say they are? I and my disciples. Okay? First in this section he asks, now in the latter day of the law, who is carrying out? The practice of Shakabuku in strict accordance with the Lotus Sutra. 
Now on the latter day of the law indicates a time when the true and provisional teachings are utterly confused, as was mentioned in the preceding passage. Unless this confusion is rectified, it will give rise to an age when quarrels and disputes prevail and the pure law is obscured and lost. That is why the practice of Shakabuku is crucial. It is necessary to clarify that the Lotus Sutra, the true teaching of Namyoho Rengekyo, alone can lead all people to enlightenment. Whereas the other sutras, the provisional su su uh, teachings of the Buddhism, the harvest, not only fail to do so, but ultimately cause people to fall into a state of inner hell and suffering because they're practicing the incorrect teaching at the time when the correct teaching has already been revealed. The pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, though <laughs> intended for people's enlightenment, do not actually... Is everybody with me? Yes. Yes. The Lotus Sutra's te pre Lotus Sutra teachings, though intended for people's enlightenment, do not actually provide a way to achieve that goal in this lifetime. Everybody's clear on that, right? Mm -hmm. They all prescribe a way that takes lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. This is because they do not contain the all-important principle of the mutual possession of the ten worlds. What does that mutual possession of the ten worlds allow for? Buddhahood within any of the other nine worlds. You know, beginningless nine worlds is always present in beginningless Buddhahood. Beginningless Buddhahood is always present in beginningless nine worlds. There's no separation. Yada, yada, yada. And 3,000 realms in a single moment of life, which is the predication of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everybody's with me, right? Yes. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, of course, if people are led via these provisional sutras to the Lotus Sutra and awaken to the mystic law of the mutual possession of the ten worlds and three thousand realms in a single moment of life, it is possible for them to attain Buddhahood as a result. But, but during Nichiren's time, which marked the start of the latter day of the law, mm -hmm. a wide assortment of Buddhist schools proliferated with each asserting that the different provisional teachings on which they based their respective doctrines were the Buddha's ultimate teaching. Consequently, far from guiding people to an understanding of the true Lotus Sutra teaching, these schools propounded doctrines that denigrated it. There was, a, as Nietzsche noted, utter confusion among <coughs> the provisional and true teachings. Therefore, it was necessary to refute the provisional sutras clarifying that they do not lead to enlightenment and that not only and, and that only the Lotus Sutra does. Now let me add this when he throws in here, of course if people are led via these provisional sutras to the Lotus Sutra, to the Lotus Sutra. Okay, that's the only way that they can attain Buddhahood is if those provisional sutras are a gateway to the Lotus Sutra. And then even if they attain, even if they find the uh, the Lotus Sutra after the former day of the law, what's necessary for them to be able to achieve uh, Buddhahood using the Buddhism of the harvest and the teachings from the Lotus Sutra? Great concentration and insight. They still have to use another process. It's not the words of the Lotus Sutra. It's still another great teacher that's consolidated this down in a way that is an achievable thing for those that weren't born to know it, that haven't made the cause to reveal it. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Each step of the way, there have been people saying, yeah, but this is what I'm doing. And it's in keeping with the true intent. The true intent from Nagarjuna to Nanye to Tintai to, to, to Myolo to Dingyo. Okay, do you understand? Mm -hmm. It was never just the straight up translation of Kumarajiva. That's even that. That's just a translation from Sanskrit into Mandarin. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. yes. So it was never about a book and words. It was about a living thing that re-manifest in the living lives of the people that expressed it through their life. It's the same thing now. Do you understand? Mm. But we're at the juxtaposition of transition. It's time to teach the correct teaching for now. So we don't teach the incorrect teaching of old. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, right? Yes. Mm. Okay. I mean, if you started teaching particle physics back in the 50s, there ain't a goddamn person that wouldn't think you were absolutely out of your mind. Mm. And now if you don't teach particle physics, there's not a goddamn thing they can learn. Mm. Yep. Okay? It's the same premise. Yep. Yes.
These schools propounded doctrines that denigrate, pardon me, where am I? First of all, am, am I out of time? No, so Okay, yeah. so where am I? Nietzsche and says, okay, on, on page 39, Nietzsche says that when anyone, no matter who, now that's a very declarative statement, please put that in your cap. Nietzsche says that when anyone, no matter who, carries out Shakabuku, the three powerful enemies are sure to appear. The practice of Shakabuku as taught in the Lotus Sutra indicates the kind of refutation I have just described, which is based on the correct teaching for attaining Buddhahood. Namyoho Rengekyo. It is not by any means motivated by intolerance or self-righteousness. This is all about ninth world compassion, has nothing to do with the animality or anger of the third and fourth world. Do you understand? Mm. As, we, as we also confirmed in the last chapter, Shakabuku in Nichiren Buddhism is grounded in, deep, in a deep commitment to the correct teaching, because you've already declared yourself in your mind to be the same as Nichiren. You're a bodhisattva of the earth, right? Mm -hmm. I've de I, I have declared, I, my, 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 I'm the same mind as Nichiren. That's my commitment, right? Grounded in a deep commitment to the correct teaching and the compassion to help guide people to genuine lasting happiness, which you know is going to be a shit storm in advance, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we already know that. All right, so the spirit of refuting realm, pardon me, the spirit of refuting error in the realm of Buddhism, valuing the law more than one's own life. That phrase is the key to everything. Only you know if you really feel that inside. Everybody can talk that way. Only an individual at the crucial moment can prove it. Like Tatsunokuchi. Like when I've been chanting and chanting and chanting and chanting and still I haven't gotten the benefit and everybody's looking at me like, quit being delusional, it's not going to happen. When those devils are, 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 are attacking. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Valuing the law more highly than one's own life. That means having faith that will allow you to not get any benefit. You don't care. You don't care. You're living to be the Buddha. You have every, every confidence that this will change. But if it doesn't, that's fine too. I'm going to go into my next life without any problems that I've conquered them all. As long as I fought to the last moment of my life, that's all I have to fight forever. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Buddhahood can never be denied for me ever, ever, ever. If I can just have that courage in this lifetime, I can guarantee myself that. This is because they, okay, where am I? Which is based on the correct teaching for where am I? Valuing the law more highly in one's life yep. means courageously battling the workings. What is the workings of the devilish nature? The workings is all those things that are influencing you, that are around you, that seem outside of you, but that are really a reflection of you. Okay, all those things that are percolating around the life condition that the devil's trying to bring out, mm -hmm. okay, and that you're fighting against, mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. So he says, means courageously battling the workings of the devilish nature inherent in life that slander the correct teaching and plunge people into misery, mm -hmm. doubt, fundamental darkness, mm -hmm. right? When such compassion and altruism underlies our actions, in other words, when we're willing to suffer for the sake of the happiness of other people, we're willing to go through this shit called human revolution of being the Buddha for the sake of propagating the correct teaching so that people can stop the misery and suffering that they can never escape unless they also embrace this teaching. We're willing to do that for them, okay? We can vanquish all error and evil. There's nothing that can stop us. We are all powerful when we take on that original state of life. Okay? Because carrying out Shakabuku is taught in the Lotus Sutra is the correct way of practice in the latter day. Serving to both protect the law and free people from suffering, it is inevitable that opposition and, and resistance will arise from ignorant forces. 
unless we grasp this principle, we will not understand the true nature of the great obstacles that befall the votaries of the Lotus Sutra. That's what I'm trying to talk to you about. So you can understand the great obstacles that befall you as votaries of the Lotus Sutra when they befall you. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Do you understand where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have anybody warn me of this shit. Because there was nobody preceding me other than, than Daisaku Akeda that actually practiced according to the Buddhist teachings. Therefore, nobody else went through this shit. I was the only one that I knew that constantly went through this. Mm -hmm. Okay? Until I finally actualized mm -hmm. a relationship of, of, of parent-teacher with, with, with Mr. Akeda. And, and finally, real, oh, dev, you've been saying devilish function all this time. I never understood what the hell you were talking about. It's this bullshit I'm dealing with constantly. Now I get it. Okay, it's not a guy. It's not an enterprise. It's not a, you know, it's, it's devilish functions. Okay? Unless we grasp this principle... We will not understand the true nature. The true nature is that they're manifest because we're doing the right thing, not the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. Of the great obstacles that will absolutely befall us as votaries of the Lotus Sutra. All right? Mm -hmm. The characteristics of the three powerful enemies. To further clarify this point, let's review the concept of the three powerful enemies once again. At the start of the encouraging devotion, the 13th chapter of the Lotus Sutra, it says that the latter day of the it says regarding the latter day of the law, living beings in the evil age will come pardon me. Living beings in the age evil age to come will have fewer and fewer good roots. Living beings in the evil age to come will have fewer and fewer good roots. Many will be overbearingly arrogant and greedy for offerings and other forms of gain. That sounds like right now, right? Mm -hmm. Increasing the roots that are not good and moving farther away than ever from emancipation. Clearly, whoever should attempt to preach the correct teaching of the Lotus Sutra amid such arrogant multitudes is bound to encounter opposition. In this chapter, the Bodhisattvas gathered at the assembly of the Lotus Sutra vow to propagate it in the Sahay world in the evil age after the Buddha's passing, no matter the daunting obstacles. The chapter's concluding verse section describes the vows these Bodhisattvas make and the nature of the obstacles and persecutions that will await them. We, re we remember that, right? That's the 20 line verse. Right. Uh, three types of people who will persecute the Lotus Sutra's pa practitioners are identified. These are the three powerful enemies. Arrogant lay people, arrogant priests, and arrogant false sages. According to the description in the sutra, arrogant lay people are characterized as ignorant. Arrogant priests are characterized by perverse wisdom and hearts that are fawning and crooked. And arrogant false sages are characterized, are characterized as despising and looking down on all humankind being greedy for profit and support with evil in their hearts. The arrogance of these ignorant, perverse, and evil people, respectively, arises from the workings of the inherent darkness or ignorance in their lives, their own fundamental darkness. This inner darkness is the source of earthly desires and other deluded impulses leading people to unhappiness and misery. The fundamental form of this darkness is ignorance, to the truth that all things and phenomena are entities of the mystic law. It is this fundamental darkness or ignorance, for instance, that prevents a person from behaving or understanding the correct teaching when they hear it, or that creates tendencies to reject it or even seek to destroy it. Here we see the fearfulness of ignorance. Okay, I want to make sure you understand, though, that while he's, 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 he's qualifying, qualifying this actually from reverse order, and because there is no separation, he can do it. But in actuality, fundamental darkness, everything else emanates from that. He's saying all of this stuff now could be called in his pure form, in his pure form, in his pure form. He's leading you back from bullshit daily life stuff, obstacles and sufferings, to make sure that you understand that's ultimately he's going to go back to the devil of the sixth heaven here. Mm -hmm. The fundamental darkness inherent in human life gives rise to the ultimate devilish function. Did I skip something? 
No. no. Okay. <clears throat> the fundamental darkness inherent in human life gives rise to the ultimate devilish function. The de the Buddhism the, what Buddhism refers to as the uh, king devil of the sixth heaven. Okay. Those who oppose and attack the devotee of the Lotus Sutra are ruled by this insidious negative function. All right? But all fundamental darkness is contained within the devil of the sixth, king devil of the sixth heaven. In the letter to Misala, Nichiren explains that when an ordinary person in the latter day practices the correct teaching with the aim of attaining Buddhahood, which hopefully all of you are, yes. the devil king of the sixth heaven will set various functions into motion to sabotage their efforts. If, all, if all of you are, then you already know that. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. one person attaining Buddhahood will lead many others to becoming Buddhas mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. In other words, one person mm -hmm. attaining Buddhahood will lead many others to become Buddhas too until eventually this Sahe world will be transferred into a pure land that is Kosenrufu. Because the devil king who rules over the Sahe world fears being robbed of his domain, he orders his retainers to obstruct the Buddhist practice of the votary of the Lotus Sutra. If this fails, he will have those retainers enter the bodies of the votaries, disciples, and followers of the people of the land and scheme to deter the votary through admon admonishments or threats. And if that too should fail, then the king devil himself will possess the mind and body of the country's ruler and use intimidation to prevent the votary from attaining Buddhahood. In discussing the three obstacles, the obstacles of earthly desires, karma, and retribution, and the four devils, the hindrances of earthly desires, our own physical and mental de functions, death, and the, king, and the devil king, that beset practitioners of Buddhism, President Toda often used to say, you may, you may be able to triumph over the three obstacles and the first three, or, uh, through three devils or hindrances, which includes even death. But the last one, the devil king, is truly formidable. As we also see in other writings of Nietzsche, the devil king manipulates the minds of arrogant lay people and arrogant priests and possesses the bodies of arrogant false sages who in turn influence the ruling authorities to harass and persecute the votary of the Lotus Sutra. Elsewhere, Nietzsche states, the single word belief is the sharp sword with which one confronts and overcomes fundamental darkness or ignorance from the OTT. Mr. Toda also frequently emphasized that the sharp sword of faith is the only means for defeating the devil king of the sixth heaven. When we vanquish fundamental darkness or ignorance through faith in the mystic law, the fundamental nature of enlightenment or dharma nature with which our lives are inherently endowed will well forth. The Dharma nature is the ultimate truth of all phenomena to which Buddha, the Buddha became awakened in his own life. Attaining Buddhahood, in, in a sense, means winning in this struggle between darkness and enlightenment. Through the practice of Shakabuku, those who uphold the Lotus Sutra can bring forth the fundamental nature of enlightenment in their own lives and help others do the same. Okay, let me say it again. According to Buddhahood, in a sense... Uh, pardon me, attaining Buddhahood, in a sense, means winning in this struggle between darkness and enlightenment. That's what it is. Winning over the sense that says, I'm not the Buddha, they aren't either, to fundamentally changing your perspective to one that is virally innate. I am the Buddha. On my worst day, I am still the Buddha. I, I finally have achieved a point of practice where the devil of the sixth heaven can kick my ass until I can't walk and I can't talk. But he can't get me to look at the Gohonsan and say I'm not the Buddha. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or that I'm a teacher of the law. Mm -hmm. And whatever I got to go through, screw it. I'll go through it. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because that's what this says to do. So that's what I did. Yeah. All right? So, but understand that. Awakening, attaining Buddhahood in a sense means winning in this struggle between darkness and enlightenment. It means winning in this struggle about faith. Yes. It's already all spelled out. Mm -hmm. The difference between actual Ichin and Sanzen and theoretical yes. Ichin and Sanzen is the faith to actualize the theoretical into the real. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's nothing more than that. That's what's going to be attacking you. It's through the practice of Shakabuku. 
What's the practice of shakabuka? You've got to know the teaching in order to do shakabuka. You can't refute if you don't know shit, right? Mm -hmm. So through the practice of shakabuka, through understanding the teaching so I could refute others to lead them to the path because that's what I was told by my mentor my mission was to do. Mm -hmm. That's how I discovered it for myself. I didn't have any questions. I didn't need to know all the shit I know now. Do you understand? Those who uphold the Lotus Sutra can bring forth the fundamental nature of enlightenment, their original state, and help others <clears throat> by explaining. It's a bear, but it's not impossible. You can do it for sure. And next week we'll start on page 42, top of the page. The Lotus Sutra is the teaching that activates the Buddha nature. Thank you. Thank you.